Hello and welcome to today's Battle Mech presentation. Today we're going to be looking at another 275 Mafiosi with the Wolverine. Here we've got a presentation that happened on Solaris a little while ago. Well, at this point, it's about 100 years ago. Jeez, things go pretty quick and those mechs don't change much, strangely enough, uh, with uh, Wolverines from uh, three different successor state houses walking on the field. It was a presentation at the start of a season, nothing too particular, outside of the fact that, well, they managed to find three Wolverines pretty much with the same setup to do it. Wolverines are extensively common. It's a 275 Mafiosi for a reason. And it's fairly popular anywhere in the inner sphere, but really not in clan space. This is going to be a bit of a marathon here. Uh, there is tons of different variants and uh, derivatives of the Wolverine to talk about. And a lot of them have fairly similar performance. So we might be skipping over a few things every once in a while. So let's get into it. The Wolverine originally comes from House Davion, and it was actually their second big attempt at making a medium mech. The first one was the Swordsman, a mech that hasn't survived the Age of War. Well, yeah, it hasn't survived the Davion Civil War, to be more precise. And it, that particular mech came out in 2463, and it was fairly average. It was a small medium at around 40 tons. It didn't do what it should be able to do at that weight range. But you can see even looking at that picture here that it does have some things that would be common with the Wolverine in the future. In 2471, Norse Battle Mech Works, which became Victory Industries, released the first Wolverine as really a response to the Terramid Hegemonies, Shadowhawks, and Griffins. Lead engineer Russell Bell played around with a lot of different design ideas, a lot of different options. Here, with the original release, the original release was deemed not heavily armed enough. So they went down the line and in 2490, it came out with the original design, let's say, the one that would be copied for all other Wolverines in the future. So let's look at those two original designs here with the WVR1R, which already had most of the base specs down. It carried a five-class autocannon in the arm with two tons of ammo and a medium laser to back it up. It had an oversized 275, uh, 265 engine, sorry, uh, to make it go about 64 kilometers per hour. It could jump with four prototype jump jets, which required the pilots to uh, know how to use them and how to land with them. So it was still fairly mobile for a mech of that particular era. It was protected by 14 and a half tons of primitive compound armor, which is about nine tons of the modern stuff. This was deemed not heavily armed enough uh, with just uh, two weapons, dealing light amounts of damage. So they started uh, going down the line and the WVR-3R is what became more or less the standard going forward. And they did that by stripping three tons of armor and one ton of autocannon ammo to add a six tube SRM on the shoulder and a ton of ammo. Remember that now because uh, an autocannon, a medium laser, and an SRM-6 is going to be your Wolverine about 95% of the time. The 1R and the 3R had various refits over the years, replacing the engine with a more standard one, getting the armor modernized moving things around, but none of those were standard until 2575 when the actual modern WVR6R came out of factories, generally from Kalon Industries, who had bought a license to build them. Next up, Free World Defense also got a license and uh, the SLDF approved the purchase of the Wolverine for service in the SLDF and House militaries, so the design started propagating just about everywhere in the inner sphere. Nowadays, you can see easily about 12 major industrial players building Wolverines in various configuration, variants, body kits. And you've got a bunch of smaller corporations building spare parts for them, arms, legs, engine bits, heat sinks, replacement parts for the autocannon, etc. So the Wolverine is actually a massive moneymaker for just about everybody in the inner sphere in some way. 
The WVR6R is a very capable machine with quite a few good points, but a terrible cockpit assembly because you feel like you're sitting on top of a laser, pretty much because you are. The actuators of the machine are a lot tougher than what you'd have on other machines as well, and the comm system and computer are some of the best available, allowing you to easily command scout lances or cavalry lances from your uh, tiny little cockpit. You got that Cortec 275, a top speed of 86 kilometers per hour, 150 meters jump range, all great stuff that you're used to with the 275 Mafia. Nine and a half tons of armor, not the maximum you can get, but quite decent. 12 heat sinks with a light energy weapon loadout, so you're generally not going to overeat. That five class auto cannon, that six tube SRM, that medium laser in the end, it really depends. It can be in that little ball mount that we see here at the top, but it can also be on a uh, top loaded mount. There's quite a few different body kits for the Wolverine. It's all basic stuff, but it's all great stuff and kept the machine in people's eyes up until now, really. The Great Houses really loved the Wolverine and it was quickly included in all sorts of organization, but they also wanted some of their own designs. The Dragonist Combine had been wary of jump jets since those prototype jump jet days where people used to crash their mechs, so they took out the jump jets on the WVR6K, which came out in 2598. The autocannon is also removed, and to re replacing all of that, you get two extra heat sinks, an extra ton of SRM reloads, which is not a bad idea if you're going to be in the field for an extended period of time, and two extra tons of armor, making it a really tough little Wolverine. Your gun mount is uh, switched over from that autocannon to a large laser, a medium laser, and a small laser, all mounted in a strange assembly. It works fairly well, and it's easy to swap the guns out when they're damaged, and it gives it a decent amount of punch at shorter range than that AC-5, but makes it a decent Cavalry unit and Raider, since it has limited ammo dependency. While this was originally a Davion design, you can see that it was built into Free Worlds League quite a bit at the time. House Davion still wanted their own version of the Wolverine, which came out in 2612. The 6 tube SRM is removed, and the autocannon is switched from a 5 class autocannon to a 10 class autocannon with 2 tons of ammo. This really becomes a preview of what would come with mechs like the Enforcer in the future. It's a little bit more mobile than your Enforcer, and it has a little bit of a tougher skin in a way, but it follows that same particular concept. In those early models, the one that people really were hunting for was the uh, Wolverine 6M from House Merrick, which Merck's commander basically were looking for heavily during the Succession War era. Probably one of the favorite version of the Wolverine out there. What was going on was that House Merrick was running out of Whirlwind autocannons, which is what the standard autocannon in that gun mount is, because they were putting them on Marauders rather than on the Wolverine. So to fix that up, well, they took out that autocannon and replaced it with a large laser and a medium laser, and the other weapons remained the same. Since you have a little bit weight left over, you'd add two extra heat sinks and add a ton of armor for extra durability. It's a little bit like that 6K that we were talking about earlier, but this one is more mobile because it keeps the jump jets. There's a reason why there's so many of those running around. People loved them and have been upgrading them to more modern technology, even though none of them are standard refits you will see quite a few different versions of the Wolverine 6M running around, even nowadays. There was a Royal Wolverine, the Wolverine 2 that they called, which was the production code WVR7H, that came out during the Ameris Civil War in 2770. It's quite fancy, it uses an endosteel chassis and ferrofibrous armor, and it's kept cool with double heat sinks instead of standard. For extra protection, all of your ammo is set in case bins, so when they blow, well, you're not losing the entire mech, just the part of the mech where the ammo is. All the weapons are somewhat upgraded. The 5-class autocannon is now a Kawabata Ultra 5, which has about double the firing rate. The medium laser is replaced with a medium pulse laser, and the SRM is tied to an Artemis 4 fire guidance system. This is probably... Uh, 
as efficient as you can get a Wolverine while keeping it extensively reliable and tough. Because as you're going to see with pretty much all the further models, you're gonna people are going to be starting to add XL engines on them, making them more fragile while saving quite a bit of weight to put all sorts of other gizmos on. There's nobody really producing the 7H version. The people around here in the Oregon reaches, we did have our own more or less version of this. We didn't have access to that endo steel at the time when we were building them. So it was somewhat similar. It had some similarities to it. And it was fairly popular here in the Rimward's periphery for a while. As the Great Earth Legion uh, recovered the Elm's memory core, advanced technologies started blowing back into the inner sphere by the 3050s, and you get major new versions of the Wolverine in its 7 series that came out around that time. You're going to see here, like I said, things are going to change here from that Cortec 275 to a Nissan 275XL, which is now the standard on a lot of Wolverines. The Fedcom facilities on Nanking started bringing out the 7D series with 10 tons of ferrofibrous armor protecting that larger engine. To make sure it was actually a little bit faster, they actually also add, tied the entire musculature to a mask system, giving you bursts of speed to about 108 kilometers per hour. The auto cannon is swapped to an ultra model. You still have that medium pulse laser in the head, and the SRM ammo bins are protected by case. It's a very decent design. Like I said, it's more fragile because of that XL engine. But if we start looking at mechs in that 3050 era here, a lot of them are going to be more fragile, but better equipped for fighting all sorts of things, and especially the incoming clan invasion. Now we talked about how the Americ version of the Wolverine was one of the most popular one, and they kept going with the 7 series. They kind of do the same thing as with the Davion variant here with the 275 from Nissan and a mask to boost your speed. You get 12 double heat sinks to try to keep you cool, but what you have is a heavy web energy weapon loadout with two ER large lasers, which basically already tax your heat sink to the max, two medium pulse laser, and that typical six tube SRM. Evolution on this in 3072, uh, you take out the ER large laser and you replace them with a single heavy PPC. I think I like this one a little bit better. Uh, might be a little bit more balanced in terms of the eat. And you get that sniping weapon with the uh, heavy PPC. It's really up to you. In 3122, there's an 11M series which came out using this basis. But rather than the two medium pulse lasers, you have a one X pulse laser and case two to protect your ammo along with just a little bit more armor. Again, all very decent designs for you to acquire, and Merc commanders would like those because of the limited amount of ammo required to run them. The DCMS adopted the 7K standard instead of either of those, which was an evolution on their previous design. This one, however, keeps the jump jets. People knew how to use them nowadays, but like everybody else, they stick a Nissan 275 in the engine slot. You get 13 double heat sinks to try to keep you cool, and the armor is boosted to 11 tons of the standard compound. They go with something quite similar for the gun mount as well, with a large pulse laser and a small pulse laser, and the end mount is replaced with a medium pulse laser. Each shoulder at that point mounts a rack of 6-tube SRM, with a ton of reload for each of them, so it's a very, very strong close range knife fighter. What you will see, however, is that a number of those have those paired launchers removed and replaced with 10 rack MRMs instead as a field refit. It was one of those mechs where the MRM racks were basically meant to replace whatever was in those uh, shoulder mounts. And it gives you a little bit more range with a little bit of a loss in damage and accuracy. In 3064, to rebuild their military, Theodore Kirita ordered a brand new Wolverine to replenish the EMS forces. This led to the creation of the 8K series, which is another one that is quite decent. You use that standard 275XL engine and you keep it cool with 15 double heat sinks at that point. The body is protected by 12 tons of case-protected standard compound, which is uh, 
starting to be a very big amount. The gun mount is a standard ERPPC, very common in the DCMS, with a coaxial ER medium laser. The end mount has a medium pulse laser, and going forward, you're going to see that on almost every single Wolverine. The 6-tube SRM is now equipped with streak technology, so it only shoots when it has a perfect missile lock. This is probably one of the better Wolverines you have access to nowadays, and it's common enough that you are going to be able to find the base design itself and parts for it just about everywhere. Galon then released the 8D series in 3066 for House Davion, at least on that side of Davion for the Davion Steiner Civil War. The skeleton is made of endo steel. You've got that common 275XL, and like the previous Davion model, you have a mask to make it go faster. You also have a targeting computer to link all the direct fire weapons on it, and it's a brand new Rotary AC2, which is mounted in that gun mount. You also have an ER medium laser in the head to give you a decent medium range punch. Rotary AC2s are better than regular AC2s because you're able to put at least a decent enough amount of lead in the air. You don't get great punch out of them, but it, they're actually pretty good at taking out vehicles. Anything that can be uh, crippled with a single shot is going to suffer from uh, being uh, peppered by a Rotary AC2. And with a targeting computer, it's going to be able to hit fairly decently. The shoulder mount is that Streak SRM6 that we're going to talk about and talk about and talk about going forward. There is also a 9D which came out as a side design for the 8D using the same endo steel chassis and XL engine, but this one doesn't have jump jets. This one still has the mask, however, to get it a burst of speed. Your main gun is that same Rotary AC2, and you have two medium pulse lasers for things getting closer for backup, well, you've got that six-tube streak SRM and a tag guidance laser to be able to direct artillery fire. This one has been a little bit rarer. I haven't seen as many of these run around. I don't know what the exact production numbers are, and the fact that it can't jump does limit it, in my opinion. Victory Industries also released a specific Comstar model with the 8C. As with the reddest of the 8 series, the skeleton is made with endo steel and a good old Nissan 275XL. For your main weapon, you've got a large pulse laser backed by a small pulse laser and the end mount as that meat pulse laser. Each shoulder has a streak 6 tube SRM, so you've got more anti tank punch on there. And everything is tied to a C3 slave module to give you better guidance if you're in that C3 network. In 3073, the Free World League and their industrialists released the 9M series. This one is one of the more modern Wolverine with the 275XL engine and five regular jump jets. Your main gun is replaced with an e heavy PPC and the end mount as an ER medium laser. The shoulder still packs that Streak 6 tube SRM. Very basic, very straightforward, but quite efficient. Around the same time, you've got a Word of Blake variant with the WVR9W, which came out in 3073. For weapons, the gun mount mounts a pair of light PPCs, while the shoulder is equipped with a 5-rack slash tube of multi-missile launcher guided by Artemis IV. You also get that standard ER medium laser in the end mount. The entire mech is tied to a C3i computer, so you're able to uh, get better guidance for your weapon as long as you're in a C3i network. Seven improved jump jet give you a ability to move 210 meters in the air, and you have light ferrofibrous armor to protect the body, combined with case two to protect the ammo. You have a 9W2, which exists as well, which replaces the C3i with a standard C3 slave and a Guardian ECM to perform some electronic warfare. The standard case is used instead of a case 2, which allows for the mounting of an ER small laser on the machine as well. It's less well protected because of a standard case rather than a case 2. C3i is far more efficient than that regular C3 slave. You can see that one was meant for real frontline units, while the other one was meant for the Word of Blake militias. The 9K series came out in 3074, and it's a little bit of a divergence from the other one because it uses a light engine instead of the XL engine to still save some weight, but be a little bit more reliable. 
It also uses a compact gyro instead of a standard gyro, which I'm not always a huge fan of, but it kind of works in this case. The computer system is tied to a C3 slave as well, which was not that uncommon with the Kirita machine of the time. Your main gun is meant to be a more short-range kind of affair with a snub nose PPC, and your shoulder mount is actually a four-tube SRM this time around. It is meant, however, to undown infantry and battle armor, mounting a trio of light machine guns and a pair of B-pods, which can be used to blow away little things that are close by. The entire musculature is also rebuilt using triple strength myomer, and a giant katana is added to the whole design because the Kuritas love their samurais. The Republic of the Sphere introduced their own version with the WVR-9R in 3089. It's got the similar speed and performance as your original Wolverine, it's nothing special there. But for weapons, you have an Ultra AC-10 backed by an ER medium laser in the head mount. The shoulder is still that good old streak 6-tube SRM. It's basically a big enforcer, and I'm not sure it's a very nice value for money when enforcers are actually around and the different variants of the enforcers are also around. A second Republican model came out in 3115 with the 10R, which is actually at this point very different in terms of performance. This one uses a 330XL engine, giving you a speed of 96 kilometers per hour, with a mask on top of it for bursts of speed up to 120 kilometers per hour and more. Six jump jet give you the full jump experience of 180 meters as well. The skeleton is made of endo steel. The armor is light ferrofibrous to save a little bit on weight. Your main weapon is a snub nose PPC, which is close range but quite efficient, and an ER medium laser in the head tied to a targeting computer. The good old Streak 6 tube SRM is on that shoulder as well. This makes it a very decent cavalry and raider mech. It is a bit expensive because that part at 330XL is not as easy to source as other bits, but it's still something that you have access to if you're able to uh, dig into your resources. There is an odd design which came out in 3143 with the WVR-10 V2, which is meant to be a sniper. It boasts the same top speed as the 10R, but this one doesn't have the mask. And the same jump range uses the same endo steel skeleton and ferrofibrous armor as well. The main gun is a Gauss rifle with three tons of ammo supported by that end mounted ER medium laser. The shoulder mount LR SRM rack is taken off completely. It's basically a fast sniper that can jump around, quite efficient, but not super common. In 3143, again, Aus de Avion also brought us the WVR 10D which goes to regular speed compared to the other one, but uses a supercharger instead of a mask to get a boost of speed. It also increases the price significantly. Your main gun mount is replaced with a rotary AC-5. The end mount is a medium X-pulse laser that has a better range than your standard medium pulse laser. You get better range and better firepower on there than your standard Wolverine. The SRM rack is, of course, a streak six tube, and each side torso mounts a case 2 to protect 1 ton of SRM ammo and 3 tons of Rotary AC-5 ammo. With 3 tons of RAC-5, you're going to be able to stay in the fight a significant amount of time. But you're going to need to reload after, you know, every engagement. Which can be a problem if you're in a deep patrol or a raid, something along those lines. With the Conjurer being the 2C variant of this and our own Flying Badger being an Omni version of the Wolverine and the Griffin, you have all sorts of side designs of the Wolverine floating around. I'm probably going to need to have to uh, give people a, a full video on the Flying Badger in the future. That might be something that I do uh, next time I have a bit of a break from work. Adding an XL engine on every single modern variance make this mech a lot more fragile than I think they should, but it still means that the Wolverine is a very good anchor for lighter lances, and it's easier uh, to pick out when you need to think of, well, what am I going to uh, buy to fill up a lance here? There won't be a lack of any of the uh, Wolverines anytime soon. There's probably a few of them that are going to be a bit rarer. Some of those more recent model, obviously, and some of the odd previous versions. 
But like most 275 Mafia mech, you should probably study them, learn how to use them, and learn how to fix them because they're going to be around and you're going to see quite a few of them. So I thank you very much for listening to me for so long. I hope you guys have a very nice rest of your day. And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.